Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we're still in day two of the national protest for or against the government. That's what is happening right now. And uh, with the planned national uh, protest, which commenced on the first day of August, which was yesterday, entering its second day, a lot of issues have been have, have become prevalent. Today we have experts in security, economy, and other areas that will be giving us expert analyses. Uh, we receive live updates from across the nation as well. Uh, but uh, we have this analyst, uh, analyst in the studio, or not in the studio, joining us uh, right now. Dr. Martin Morgan is a public affairs analyst. And also we have Alex Okwankwo, uh, who is a security expert, joining us. We are expecting yet uh, another guest and also our correspondents to join us in the course of this uh, uh, discussion. So in the meantime, Dr. Morgan, good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, great morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, my brother there, and a good morning to the crew. Mm. And Mr. Okwankwo, good morning and welcome to the program. A beautiful morning to all Nigerians. We wish everybody well. Okay. Uh, so let me begin with you, Mr. Okwankwo, because of what ha uh, we said before even coming on air. Uh, this protest has come up, and uh, you were trying to uh, just tell us that uh, there is a good side to it. A lot of people may not see the good side. So let's just get to understand what this good side to protest and whatever is happening in our country right now is. Okay, so it's, it's very straightforward. Um, when you're building a democracy like ours, which is in a third world country, we must also situate ourselves. Nigeria is still a developing country. We are far from it. What that means is that the democracy itself in Nigeria is still being, is something we're still nurturing. What else that also means is that there's no real communication yet. I bet you that if you were not in the media, you would have a lot of difficulty talking to your own local government chairman, your own House of Reps member, and your own senator. I bet you that's difficult. And that's the case for 95% of Nigerians. Those who can do that are very connected. And those who are connected are asking for contracts for handouts and all that. Most of the people, most of the population, most of the students cannot relate with their leaders. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying that's the process. We will get to the stage where when things happen, like in the US, after 400 years, you must recognize, you can talk to your senator. In France, the senators spend three years in their, three days in their constituency and two days in the capital in Paris. That's how it works. And it's by law. They spend three days in their constituency, meeting their constituents, and two days representing them in Paris, in the federal, in the center. We haven't gotten there yet. So the only way the masses can express themselves is by protest. It doesn't mean it has to be violence, but the violence we're having is due to excessive hunger and poor education and incivility. These are things we already have with us. The agony that is going to um, attack the uh, protesters is already in the Mantu uh, car park. All, all through the week. So it's not as if you're somebody that just imported himself from Benin Republic. He's with us already during the week. So people should not be so amazed or so surprised that we have this kind of violence because we also have this kind of uneducation. We also have this kind of incivility all day, all year. So what I'm saying is that democracy is expensive because it's expensive to construct. If you go to the history of Eastern Europe and go to the history of Europe itself, the 60s, the 70s, and 80s were bloody. That's how they built democracy, which most of our young people are jackpotting into now. Canada in the 1970s, 1980s, you could not live there. You know the island, you know the story of Ireland and the IRA, you know the story of Spain and, the, and, and, and all the, uh, the Franco era. So democracy is something that has to be built and nurtured. It is expensive in manpower, in human resources, and even in social resources. Okay, let's hear you, uh, Dr. Morgan. Is, this is 25 years of uh, democracy, and I don't know if we will still be calling it nascent democracy, because uh, uh, if you had a child of 25 years, you will begin to think about how this child should stand on his own. Even in some other uh, countries, from 18, you should stand on your own. For democracy, maybe it will take a longer time. But whatever is happening in Nigeria, can we still say it's because our democracy is young? Well, I think uh, what uh, my brother Alex said there is, uh, if I give us that uh, costly uh, historical review of how it's gone and how the, the process, like he said, in France, too, yes, France is a country I know very well. He was very right for what he said in Africa. But then, the question there is that, like the question we are asking, are we still in nascent democracy? That is the question I want to add, which I feel that 
if you are copying something, you have to copy. It's not that you are solving this and but the issue is that those representing us or those who are involved, the politicians who are involved, they have a different mindset. And that different mindset made them not to abide to the ethics of what is obtainable in other clan. Like you rightly said, you hardly see even a, a politician in the US or Europe or in other country flying around with that type of motorcade when he's going to work or going to his village. Most time, most what we have here, we are just, we are having a bunch of Epicureans who are just more interested in seeing how they can attend funerals and their uh, birthdays and the weddings of their uh, of their siblings without really telling the people how you can translate. Like you rightly said, there's a total disconnect between them and us. By the time they are seeking your food, they come to the look and crannies, they use your boot to get in. But by the time they get in there, you don't get them again. So you cannot tell me that because democracy is young, at that point, that is what you are unable to do that. After 15, 10 years of practicing a particular thing, because there is no that responsibility of answering or questioning the status quo, that is why it becomes like a norm that they started behaving and they accept it as how we are. And we have a very uh, docile uh, electorate. A docile electorate in the sense that they are not taking about the, the, the education on how somebody going to represent you to understand that, yes, you have the right to call it back. Do you know what uh, Professor Padora said in the substance of politics that democracy become one of the worst form of government for the third world country because it's not been able to put you at the right frame of mind of that responsibility and accountability. You hardly find it. So I may not really agree too much to say that because it's a missing one. It's just the innate great intentions of those who are going there and the, 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 the way they, they, they look at the center as a national, I don't want to use key, the center as a national oil boom for them to go and just amass the wealth for themselves. So this is why it becomes a do or die affair. We are not going there actually as a representative because it's lack ideologies. Most of our political democracy we are copying lack ideology. The ideology is not seen and that is why we are feeling this type of situation we, we, we are today in that type of total minutes. So it's, it's bad. It's bad. So it's, it's a mindset. There's no voters' education. There's no the political education. There's a total disconnect. There's no record process, even though it is imbibed in the Constitution that you can record. But it's very difficult to get it done because already you have a group of stomachies. Stomachies is a process of where leaders are thinking from their stomach. You are a security expert, my brother will agree to me that that is funded by greed. This is what happened in uh, Guyana trying to some of the elements. That is why our people keep on dancing with face cap and a t-shirt when it's time for campaign. But we don't question the, the ideology behind some of this campaign. This is the problem we are. So it's not only the leadership, but the followership. In fact, there's no leadership. It's just the politicians who are just there to make it a fanfare. That is why we are having that type of disconnect. That is why we are not having some proper updates. All the updates you get is just the negativity of their intents. So this is what we are having, and that is why it has gone back to the macro system of economy, where well some policies are not people oriented, but some policies are individually oriented. But that is why they can tell the whole shamba that we are not in a nightclub. That is why they can tell you go and put there, some of us will be eating. You invariably tell you that there's chicken, we're going to eat chicken. So there's that sort of disregard to the people. So this is where my brother was talking about that disconnection between your representatives. Okay, let me come back to you, Alex. So uh, it's not it's the innate group. Yes. Let me come to, back to uh, Alex. The operative word when you were Can talking, the, the operative word when you were talking was uh, building. You know, when you're building a democracy, a lot of things will be expected. But while we are building, who takes the mantle of leadership? Is it those people at the helm of affairs or the people? Because in Nigeria, what we see that is lacking is the office of the citizen. I'm not sure that a lot is being done there, except in cases like this where we have a protest and all that. So who takes the lead in building a democracy that will be suitable for us? The, 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 the people. Uh, first, let me thank uh, Dr. For all he said. Perfect. But I, I will respond to you by saying the people have to take the mantle. It's the people. Do you know what we're going through, sir? We're going through a system that was created by people who were mischievous. And that system is now creating other people that are mischievous. Are you getting my point? Mm. This system that we're running, this form of democracy that we're running in Nigeria, was actually created by those who had bad intentions by creating such a constitution. 
And now that constitution is now breeding politicians that are not connected with the people. So everybody is culpable here. It is also a question of educating enough people to know what the uh, democratic process is. We still don't have 50 percent of Nigerians educated, and I mean civic education. Now I'm talking about. I'm not talking of just going to university or going to futu. I'm talking of civic education where you know your rights, your responsibilities, and your duties. We haven't gotten there yet. You saw it yesterday with the riots. No, uh, sorry, the protest. You see, my, even my lapsus uh, says it all. The protest. It is still a protest as we speak. So what is happening is that. Educated young people come out to say things are not working well. Immediately, immediately, the band of hooligans, the band of people who are really in, in, in hunger, the band of uneducated people come out to join them. What we saw yesterday, if anybody has a bit of political sense, should be scared. It means we're leaving a lot of people out of the system and they are coming to haunt us. You and I cannot just spend our time training our children. Look, for as much as I know, there is no award for the best father of the year. Because what you're doing to your children, your father has probably done more for you. The point is, we have to also be careful and train other people's children. That's how we build a democracy. You cannot just take care of your two kids and say they are going to be lovely, they are going to love the ball. They are going to be staying side by side with that boy who was selling orange by the roadside, who, who is probably the same age. So there has to be a societal solution to all these things. It's not a one-on-one, -on -one, you take care of your own, you go away. We are all here together. And so there's a bit of collective fault in this thing. You cannot just say leaders. Everybody, look, doctor was saying it. There is no political education. When we come into elections, parties don't pretend they're manifestos. There is no real difference between the APC and PDP. In fact, they exchange senators and House of Rep members and governors. The current people in government, and I don't mean only the executive, I mean the legislature, are all made up of people who were ruling before one way or the other. They are either former senators or former governors or former. No, no, we have not moved forward. We think we've moved forward in 25 years. We have not, because it's the same people. Check it. Just look at it. The Senate president was a governor. He is a senator. He was a senator before on the ground. Now he's a Senate speaker. So, I mean, we cannot keep doing that. Where are the changes? Where are the fresh minds? Where are the people who have been outside and have come back with some ideas? We, are, we keep recycling. And we keep, in fact, the people that brought us in the situation we are economically are those who are given the mantle to say they will bring us out. There's something fundamentally wrong. People should be mentoring people. And nobody, people don't know that the, the Democrat Party, when Obama was contesting, it was actually proposed by the cabal of white Democrats. Obama did not come out himself. People saw a young black man and said, you go there and make that speech. It was just a senator like every other senator. We don't do those things in Nigeria. It has to be somebody sponsored by you. It has to be your tribe. It has to be your tribe. It has to be your religion. It has to be your... No, we can't do those things. That's not how democracy works. We have to be able to allow other people to emancipate. All of us now in the studio should be able to have somebody who is not our kinsman that we are sponsoring one way or the other because we've seen a bright light in that person. But we don't do that yet. So democracy is still something we are going to construct. We are not that late. I wouldn't say we are that late. It's just that we are not going towards the right direction. Like I said earlier on the program, uh, the present administration may have hit the ground running, but in the different direction, in an opposite direction to progress. Uh, but um, uh, Dr. Morgan, um, everybody or almost everybody talks about the Constitution, that the Constitution is one of our problems. In fact, uh, Mr. Okonkwo just said it as well, that we have had this Constitution that is... Uh, uh, crafted by people who may not have had the interest of the people at heart. And even now in the National Assembly, there is, uh, there is uh, this talk about returning to a, a very old constitution of about 1963 uh, or so uh, that they said that was the one that really spelled out the federation that we call Nigeria, that the federating units were standing on their own and it was working and all that. Do you really believe it's the constitution that is our problem? We have gone back to the national anthem. Now we're th talking about going back for the constitution. Maybe we need something that will reset our brain. Uh, we have to go and start from, from the 60s and the 50s and all that. I don't know. So what is your own take on the constitution and the call for a review of this constitution? I think, uh, from my own very much understanding, that constitution, 1979, with the people of Nigeria, that started with the people of Nigeria, and then God bless us. It was a constitution that was already grafted up by the military and the selected some committee and put into place. But despite all that, 
we still have to have some of the positive we need to take it back. If I'm talking about in the constitution, nobody asks you to go and live a lavish time if you read that constitution from page one to the end. So it is what we are saying that we need to go back to the education of how we select our those representatives. Now going back to 1966, this is not 63 or 66 constitution for the parliamentarian system of government. It's not even because it's still just like you changing the bottle, but the content remains the same people. Because if you're going to be with the same people with that education they have and that mindset they have, what we will end up having is still going to be what is not going to be suitable for the people. Except we are not saying that fine, we are not changing to restructure according to what uh, uh, the constitution drafting committee or the Oputa panel or whatever said before that. Yes, let's go back to our you know, a proper federating state like what is obtainable in Switzerland. So, so that will not be a different mindset that yes, we need to educate the people. But the question is that will it change the act of the people who are going to represent us? We do not going to be the same oppressive tendency that we are, we are experiencing. This is not, it's not changing the constitution that matters. It's changing the mindset and re-educating our people who are going to represent us and putting all the process back we are changing the constitution, we change the national term. Nigeria, we held it. How are we holding them? Yesterday at Toyota, they were reciting a rise of compatriot. So we cannot tell you that. And I was <laughs> and it was just the irony of the situation that the compatriot should rise. But we said we let Nigeria held the in brotherhood we stand. How do we stand in brotherhood when somebody is amassing what's supposed to be for the constituency? Look at those hooligans. I'm sorry to use the word. The guys, the miscrime in other uh, states that came in. Somebody is representing them in the constituency and is collecting the constitutional allowance. What has it been doing to them? What has been the impact for them to be? Maybe some of them are fuckernizers and if some of them are driver, car push and whatever. What have they been doing to them? But when the election comes in, they'll use it, a trailer, load them and go to their constituency to go and vote for the same person who's not in the National Assembly. So what has it done? So changing the constitution will not really change the mindset. We have changed the national anthem. I don't know if you can even go back to the old national anthem and change the mindset. Where's the brother who we are standing with hunger? So these are the issues we should be able to know. I agree we are building a system, we are building a democracy and the rest, and let us have a true federation. Yes, the local government autonomy should be one of the good side of if it's well implemented. So like I just have said, that mentorship, that what we don't have here is, is we are having God for that reason. If you have a proper mentorship, there's a difference between mentorship and godfatherism. Godfatherism is an act of servitude that you remain loyal to your, your, your soul, whosoever be the, is your godfather. But mentor is a putting on the right pathway to do the right thing to reflect on the society whereby you can build another one. But when we are having, you have a, a cyclical godfatherism that is embedded with grief. So is that part of the constitution? Is it, is it the fault of the constitution for people to behave like that? No, it's not so. If you go to that 1979 constitution, maybe some areas should be amended. We be amended that yeah, maybe we are, we are trying to see how we can bring some of the things in the exclusive uh, 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 and uh, uh, bring them down to a particular so that we bring in that we have a true federation. Uh, federation. I keep on saying Switzerland, they are one of the best federations I can think of. Whereby you know that the center becomes very weak, all of us will just meet at a, at a particular period and we go. Like uh, I said, democracy is too expensive for us in Africa here. What are we doing with the National Assembly and the State House of Assembly and the local government assembly? What are these experts? They are all living at the expense of the media resources from the country. That is why every person is making it as a do or die affair. You should be able to just go there and make sure. And when you get there within a particular period, if you don't have anything, your caseman will call you. Why are you going there? Why didn't you get something? Just like what uh, uh, China Achebe wrote in uh, No Longer at Ease. So, this is the situation we are finding ourselves. So, constitution good, we can just amend certain provisions and change the art of our political and electoral processes, whereby we can now put sanctions that, yes, we can be recalled. We can be recalled, and there should be a tenure, a long, a tenure period. Lots of people have been in that National Assembly from 1999 up to date, and they don't have, so they became permanent uh, seat members in the National Assembly. If you want to tell, it is now we even know that now national they have in other seniority. Those they get the allowances based on the other seniority. Those who have been there for long, and so this is a cabalistic approach to that issue that we are creating, and it's not helping. So the young man outside who wants to go there, he wants to get to that cabal, and then become he continues. So that is not what we want.
after a particular period, like Makisa did in Senegal, five years, seven years, you go away. Another person come and left me that place uh, a part time thing, not a, a permanent job. Because the cost of that act of governance is expensive. But not the government per se, but government must keep on going on. But let's look at the constitution again. The constitution does not tell you to, to go and, uh, and answer prayers before media. The constitution does not tell you to so go and protect. The citizen have the right to say yes. Yeah. The citizen have the right to call it. I remember that there was in one of the dispensations, the, the people tried to recall one of their senators. Was it Mr. Kim? And he never did one. This is the situation we want to see. Look at the constitution. Okay, I, I do not know if uh, really it's a, uh, it's a problem of. Uh, whether you stay in the National Assembly for a very long time. Even in America, there are people who have stayed for over 40 years in the National Assembly. It, it really boils down to, while you are there, what are you doing? How have, have you impacted on the people? How much of a voice for your people uh, have you been? And, and that's, that's what we should be talking about, actually. But some people we know uh, use that as a retirement ground. We know that before you can become a very functional member of the National Assembly, there are some things that you might need to, um, to, to, to learn. And you can't keep changing people to go and start learning. And before you know what you are supposed to do, you find your way around the, the, the National Assembly. You are giving way to another person. But we, we will take, uh, we'll join our Benway State correspondent right now to give us a, an update before we come back to the issues that we are, we are discussing right now. Because these are the issues that have made it possible for uh, August 1 to 10. Uh, threats to Nigeria, as it were. So let's look at what is happening in Benway. Let's hear him out. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, studio. Uh, Agaji, Mr. Wangu Agaji, good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, what is happening in your neck of the woods? In Benway State, how is the situation right now? Uh, the, the situation in Benway State is... Uh, is that uh, the Benue people uh, have not joined the nationwide protest. Okay. And uh, there are reasons uh, I was that uh, they, they are just recovering from the insecurity and the uh, some of them said that uh, the protest will uh, bring more hardship to them. And uh, following the pleadings of the governor of Benue State, they decided to heal to the pleadings of the governor of not participating in the planned protest. So, I want to report here that uh, uh, one of the streets in Makodi here, people are moving on with their normal businesses. Everything is going on smoothly. I am in one of the streets where you see uh, the seven is uh, high movement is on we have not noticed any strike i mean sorry any protest even yesterday the commissioner of police moved towards the state capital uh to see the situation himself i uh, attributed that to the success of the the, the pleading of the security and the state government so here in Benue, the two of the nationwide protests still we have recorded a zero compliance. That is the situation here. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Francis. Um, <clears throat> you say you are in Makardi, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you for the situation report there. Uh, we're glad that at least somewhere in Nigeria, they... Not that the people are not 
uh, joining the nationwide protest against bad governance, but there is peace. Uh, whether they are protesting or not protesting, there is peace in Benue State, and we like that. So Benue has been a very volatile state if, if it comes to insecurity, so it's only natural that the people will be uh, thinking about safety first before anything else. Okay, Francis Terde from uh, um, Benue State. We also have what was happening in Lagos State, but as we are talking to our guests uh, that have joined us in the studio, uh, we'll be getting some of these clips from uh, uh, Lagos State. In the meantime, uh, Olasukomi Ogumoko in Ekiti State has just joined us. Olasukomi, good morning and welcome to the program. and other corporate uh, organized uh, companies that are not open uh, their offices. While I was monitoring the situation in the yesterday, I, I speak with the commissioner of police, uh, Adetio Akinwale, where he addressed the journalists in the state that the state is peaceful and there was no protest in Ekiti. And as at when we are speaking with him yesterday, he said no one has come out to to show face that they want to have any protest in Ekiti state. Though earlier before then uh, on Wednesday. Series uh, organization, huge in the state, religion leaders, civil society have addressed media that they are not joining the protest because the reason is that the protest uh, is a faceless protest, and no one has so feel that is the leader of the protest that will be coordinating it in the state. And with that, from the failure they are, they are, they are, uh, they are getting that some hoodlums are planning to even hijack the protest and turn it to something else. So, and they, they said that their own reason of not joining the uh, end back government protest in a kitty state. And from looking uh, uh, from, the, from the book of things this morning, people came out early to continue their daily activities. Or like yesterday, that they are watching out whether something is going to happen, whether some group, group are still going to come out or not. But seeing now, it is state is peaceful, no protest anywhere. But security operatives are patrolling all the major areas and the security presence in the state and every uh, area are heavy. Okay. Oh, that's fine. So um, now that there is a peace in the Kitty State, have the um, banks or other organizations opened? Or they are still locked? No bank yet open. You know, it's still early. From two banks I visited this morning, no bank open. But maybe the time, maybe those some corporate organizations that are not open yesterday are open this morning. So some of them are starting open their offices and business. Okay. So that is the present situation now. Okay, thank you so much, Olasukomi, uh, for the update in Ekiti State. Um, let me go back to our guests here. Um, Mr. Okwankwo, let me begin with you as we, we wrap up on this segment. Um, the, the response, of, of, let me not even start with the response. Uh, this protest has escalated. People have died. People, uh, things have been uh, looted. Uh, things have been destroyed and all that. Um, what would you attribute the level of destruction or the level that the uh, protest has taken now, the dimension the protest has taken now to? Would you um, ascribe this situation to the response of government 
or that it is just a natural thing? What are the things that could have been done before the protest so that we don't get to the state that we have reached now with the protest? As a security expert. Two things we have to get right. Um, first, I will say kudos to the security apparatus, the police in general. They've done pretty much well, especially in the very big states. That's the first thing. Second thing, we must clarify the three steps to a manifestation of, of the population. There's what you call manifestation, rightly, which is strikes, you know, uh, like students' unions presenting themselves in front of the VC. That's a manifestation. The next level is protest. Protest generally has a matching side of it, which means we go from a, a, a particular area to another area. So you see huge crowds, like you saw yesterday, moving from, let's say, Ojota to Ikeja or vice versa. The third part of this is the worst part. A protest can immediately derivate into a riot. So that's what we saw in Ensas. Because of one or two shootings, one or two killings, it now became mayhem or uncontrollable. These three processes exist in any democracy. The point is, at which point does the government intervene? When I say intervene, I mean, where do we have an exit plan? What's the exit plan to stop the process, protest? Where do the citizens accept that the government has reacted well? We are now all going back home. If we don't define that, uh, this is this can spiral into a protest. What you saw in a riot, what you have in Kenya now is a riot. It started as a protest. So everybody here, including the government, has to be careful for this not to move from that stage of protest, which is still peaceful, pretty much peaceful. Very shameful that a few people have died and that properties have been destroyed. But again, like I said earlier, democracy comes at a price. This is one of the prices of democracy. People died also for, for in, in Tiananmen uh, Square. People died also in the U.S. If you remember, the 50s, the 60s, and 70s were blood in the U.S. and it culminated in a black president in the, in the, twin, in the year 2000. It's a process. It has, we have to go through that process. But the government can intervene at any stage to avoid a riot. So for now, kudos to the security agents. It's not been that bad, I would say. Contrary to what people think, it's not because we, we have deaths in Nigeria anyway. Uh, but this, this, it's shameful that people die. But we cannot now say that because there are a few deaths, the protest should not, have, uh, 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 should not take place. A citizen of a country has the right and the duty to protest or not to protest. But my question we is... Must, uh, we must, we must, but my yes, question is, could, question could is, the government have done something else that could have... Uh, maybe doubts the tension so much so that maybe we would not even have this protest. Or even if we have it, we'll be talking about oh. a one-day protest or a more peaceful one than this. Their response to oh, this yes. protest, did it explain oh, yes. it? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The first thing, look, the first thing, the first people I, I share my fault is people in the mass. All these senators and all the House of Rep members should have gone home and talked to their people. We keep forgetting House of Reps. The name already symbolizes the meaning. They are representing us. The point is nobody has contact with them. They are the first ones that should have gone in place of the government to talk to the people and say, look, we are doing this, we are doing that, it's going to take time. It should not have been the ministers or the essays coming to give people a lesson of why they should not protest. Protesting is the fifth or fourth arm of democracy. It is supposed to exist. That's the only way government sees that people are not happy with the process. So there has been a little bit of fault in government by not taking the right actions. And when I say government, please don't get it wrong. It's not the executive. I mean the government in general. The, the people that the mass should not have been enjoying, some of them are not here out of the country. They should have gone to their people, their constituency, and say, look, we know this government is doing this. Give them time. What exactly can we do now to keep people out of the streets? Not those 10 demands, of course, they're not going to happen overnight. Reducing subsidies is not going to happen overnight. But what can we do now to make you guys postpone your protest? They didn't do that. That would have been the first thing I thought. They had three weeks in advance knowing that August 1 was going to happen. We all knew that. So what did the senator do when he had that there was going to be a protest in three weeks' time? He just sat down and watched. It's not going to happen like that. That is also democracy. These guys should come and talk to us individually in their constituency and say, look at what government is doing. Look at the blueprints. Look at where we're heading to. Give us time to see if this government is doing that. Our job is oversight. The job of the Senate is oversight. But nobody's doing that. Okay, uh, right. yeah. Right. Before I go to Dr. Martins to wrap up, uh, let, me, let me go to Joss uh, uh, for our correspondent to give us an update. Uh, Nasir Saidu from Joss Plateau State, please. Um, good morning and welcome. Good morning, sir. Please, very briefly, what is happening in uh, Joss right now? Okay, yeah, Joss, uh, yesterday, uh, we witnessed uh, a very peaceful uh, protest 
by by a large number of young people who came out to you know um you know present their you know plight uh, you know regarding the ongoing protests a uh, nationwide hunger protest and I must say that before yesterday we we have you know as a general we have several groups coming out to to say that they are pulling out of the forces. And so we didn't really expect much um we, we didn't really expect you know the protests to really pick up as as we, we observed yesterday. But the good side of it is that it was very peaceful. It was, uh, I mean, the young people organized themselves. Uh, there was no any clash between security. There was no any clash between, uh, you know, anybody. So, um, okay. uh, so is it still, know, still very peaceful right the, now? It's still very relatively peaceful right it, now? It, it is it okay. is very peaceful okay. this morning. All right. Yes. Uh, Okay, thank you very much, Nasir. Thank you for that update. We are glad that in Joss, we were afraid that Joss may be volatile, but now that we know that it's peaceful, we're very thankful. Uh, Dr. Martin, just a final word before we wrap it up, please. My final word, just like what Alex said, that uh, it's, a, it's part of the democratic process. The only thing there is just that if there was a communication between the various uh, representatives and said to the constituency, we wouldn't have been out. But this idea of a uh, corn and chicken uh, approach to the people, this is what is not always happening. But I think people would have expected that maybe the president would have just made a statement to the country, not through the aides, because he was the person who had the mandate of the people. If that was done, I think uh, most of the things could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Morgan, and uh, Mr. Okwankwa, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. You too. You so and much. be safe, please, wherever you are. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we've been talking with Dr. Martin Morgan and Dr. Uh, Mr. Alex Okwankwa, both are uh, public affairs analysts. As we wrap up this show, there are so many videos coming from Lagos State, uh, what has been happening today, and some are from yesterday. So as we wrap up, you'll get to see these videos and see what is happening in Lagos State. In the meantime, stay safe wherever you are, and think about Nigeria, and keep ourselves safe. My name is Nyamgul Agaji.